I don't think we want it too wet. Otherwise it will crack. <laughs> Otherwise it will crack when we slap it on. Uh, when it dries, I mean. Perhaps. That's a lovely slab right there. If we could just press that into it. Because you're meant to throw it on. And so that the force so it gets of it, in. Yeah, it gets in the gaps. Which we could try. But I feel like it's not, it's still so solid. I feel like it's... <laughs> go back a bit. Back a bit. Yeah, now go forward. That's it. Wait, wait. Hang on. Yeah, okay. Go. 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 Stop. Oh! Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> too high. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. <clears throat> hey folks, welcome back to the Celtic Roundhouse build. I can't remember what episode it is now, four, four no, maybe five or six actually. Uh, we are working, as I said in the previous one, on playing the hazel woven walls, i.e. kind of wattle and daub. Again, we're trying to use the resources that we have here in the woods it's not going to be the perfect mix. We're likely to get some cracking in it, but it's easy, it's accessible, and there's a lot of it here. Then we threw on some straw, which is going to act as our binding agent to try and keep it all together and stop it from cracking. It's still going to crack, but it will kind of give it the majority of its rigidity. So we added the straw, again, folded it over like a burrito, stomped on it even more, uh, until it got to a, a nice kind of consistency where we could pull it apart. It probably needed a bit more, maybe water, but for this panel, we're quite pleased with how it turned out and we're gonna change it up along the way for the other panels. For example, traditionally back then, in the Celtic times, the same with the Anglo-Saxons, they reckon they would have used animal dung as part of the binding agent. We have actually seen some animal dung that the, uh, the landowner has further down there. So we might ask if we can use some of that uh, on a different panel to see how it comes out. We had a bit of drama today. We 
we had a bit get over here we had a bit of drama today okay so, firstly the first thing that happened and it's not the first time it's happened no it's happened today yeah. is as you can see these things i mean we're working on the wall so we're, we're you know we're kneeling down we're trying to get the clay onto these I'll bring the camera over so we can see. You get so carried away, you're putting it on, and you, you know, you're chatting away, you're having a right laugh, and then suddenly you get up. This is what I did. I got you, up real quick, yeah. and I cheese grated my back. <laughs> and it sounded horrific when it happened. Have a look. Hey, it, it probably doesn't look too bad, but... Yeah, but it made, the graze. sound it made was pretty oh, bad. And the sound was, I made after. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know if I got it on record, but it's not as bad. Like, that's a fa fairly good graze you got there. But, but, wait, 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 let's, happened, let's, let's turn happened, the camera around. Well, I probably can't so, see it. Mike, now. you tell us what happened. So I'm here. Just goes to show, there's a serious message behind this, because although we were rolling around laughing both times, actually when it happened, it we didn't know whether we'd have to go to hospital or not, but we're not going. But I was here, this side, getting that daub in. Actually, I think I was doing a bit of filming as well, and we were just mixing it. I was filming Dustin, putting some shots, and then I got up like this, and I got a really fast, and that point there went right on the top of my head here, and I had my hat on, and I'm gonna overlay an image now of maybe, what, five minutes, 10 minutes after it happened, of the cut that came down my head. And that was with the hat on. We reckon if the hat wasn't on, I would have been having to get stitches. If, but if it wasn't on, I reckon we'd be both but now on our I way just, to the You might have seen in the intro, I was putting some tissue on my head. The tissue's not getting soaked. It's soaking up most of the blood. You won't see anything now. It's all clotted. And you've changed the tissue about four times that's already. That's the fourth or fifth tissue. But luckily, it stopped bleeding. If that tissue kept getting blood all over it, I wouldn't have been in a good way. But I'm just pleased that it clotted. But that was with a hat on. And that shows you guys how quickly things can go wrong. I mean, we laughed, didn't we, at first? And we were like, this, yeah. is, this is pretty funny. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I was like, uh, mate, this is a bit, <laughs> bit warm here. And then, yeah, yeah it's just I was, a bit, I was actually quite shocked when I saw it to begin with. But I'm so glad that the blood stayed around the wound and it yeah, didn't start yeah. dripping off your yeah. face. Yeah. So it shows it wasn't that deep. It was more like a graze. Yeah, we were, to, be, to be honest, that, the serious point behind that is the most simple things can end up quite badly wrong. Normally you're thinking it's going to be a tool, it's going to be a knife or an axe injury, but this was a piece of wood and me stepping up. So to ensure that you have the right first aid kit with you, we cleaned it out with water, we got some just, just tissues really, dry tissues, made sure your hands are clean, compressed them on, I held it on for half an hour, luckily the blood had stopped. If it hadn't done, we'd have had to do a, probably a better clean job maybe strapped it up, I've got some straps, um, not straps, but I've got some uh, wound clotting gauze and things like that. And we probably would have had to use that and had a trip to hospital. But luckily, I don't wanna be going to hospital with all the corona around, so that's good. Hopefully that's not gonna happen. But just chose to, goes to show guys, you've gotta be really vigilant out there. And often it's not the sharp tools and things like that, it's sticks and climbing up ladders and things like that that you can get injured with. So just be aware of that. But it was funny at the time, but then actually later on we were like, maybe we should, uh, yeah. should, we should rein it in a bit. So we're thinking, chances of that we went again. for this for kind of an authentic look, like with, a, with an angle, it kind of just went with the symmetry of the house. Now we're thinking maybe we're just gonna bevel this off a bit and just get rid of that point, because it's the bottom point that's doing it. So if we can just semi-circle, I don't know, we just, we're thinking of putting a cap on it. Naturally, we could cut it right back to the beam, the wall frame here, and it wouldn't be a problem. But we were saying the only ones we're really banging our heads on, are, uh, really, it's this one and this one, probably just that one. Once we're around here, these come out so much further, these, these rafters, that we don't need to be going underneath them. If you look, it's so low, I'm not really going to bang myself. It would just be my, maybe my arm or something. But it's only because those were higher that we're banging ourselves. So lesson learned. <laughs> this stuff is so much better. So much better. Let's have a go. It's totally different. Like, look at the colour, right? Oh, yeah. To the other wall. That one's much darker, so that must have had a much higher mud content. Yeah, because we just... Whereas this is pure clay, almost.
Well, we're starting to make very good progress. We got a lot done in just uh, half a day, really, if that. So we've done one, two, three, four panels, the whole half of one side of the roundhouse. You can see, it's a, we found some today that's a completely different texture, and you can see the colour difference. Yes, that has dried a bit more, but the colour difference is much more like clay on this side. We seem to have found a bit more of a purer clay in the ground as opposed to the one that's mixed with soil. We, yes, it's all bubbly and bumpy at the moment, but we'll be doing another layer over the top to smooth it all round. Just wet your hands, and then uh, it's a bit like pottery, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's quite satisfying. And that was set like concrete. It will crack. We're going to get cracks because we don't have the perfect mix, and, but it's going to be uh, it's going to be worth it once we do that extra layer as well. And obviously, you can see this gap just above. Uh, Dustin's head there that little gap we are going to leave that's as high as the the hazel wall goes we're going to leave that the thatch is going to be coming down to about where my finger is here so there'll be a big overhang and that gap's going to act as an air vent for when we have fire inside hopefully and just allow a bit of airflow and for smoke to get out so it is purposeful <laughs> Join us here on a different day now. I can't remember if this is the second or third day. That knock to the head has confused things a bit. But we're still playing the outside of the walls. This time, we've changed our mix up a bit. So for the first lot, we just used the clay that we found probably 50 meters or so that way. Uh, and it was pretty much just the clay, some straw and some water. For this lot, we've done clay, straw, water, but we've also added some wood ash from the fire. From a bit of research, I believe the wood ash helps to keep it all bound together and basically prevents cracking. It just it makes it more of a, a better consistency for when it dries. I've personally never really used it before in a mix, in a daub mix. I'm going to see what happens. It's all experimental, as is pretty much most things that we do here on TA Outdoors. But we're going to. It'd be interesting once those walls dry to compare the the wall where we used no ash and then the wall that we used wood ash in. How are you finding this mix Dustin? It's actually not too bad, I think we've got a nice, it's got quite a nice consistency 
Feels a bit better, and we've got longer straw now, haven't we? Longer a little bit straw, and I that. think the straw, because last time we used, well, it was more like long, it's like grass. Or it hay. was like dried grass, yeah. But this is a lot strong. I'm sure this is going to be a lot stronger. It's thicker, isn't it? And it's thicker. So the idea is, it just, it's just going to bind it. So if anything thing tries to crack and fall off, these fibres are going to hold it in place, and then eventually we're going to come along, and then smear yeah. some more along, and just build it up and you know it's not going to be we're never going to get a perfectly smooth no, finish not with natural not with the stuff it will got. crack but the idea is that it's going to stop the cold air coming in during the winter months when we're in there having a cook up now it's not traditional i know using obviously a tarp it's very man-made in the saxon house episode where we did the clay the walls where i did it with dad you'll see me uh, using a stick i dug a hole and put the clay in that and that probably was a bit more of a traditional method of doing it here we're doing a bit more of an advanced method but it does work and it makes it a bit quicker because we need a lot more clay on this structure than we did on the saxon house but it's it's looking good it's really coming together it's a lovely day as well today it's quite a hot day it's a lovely day yeah it's really nice update on my head a lot of you've been asking um i got it glued together i had to go to hospital in the end i didn't want to with the virus around and things but my wife emmy told me i needed to go in so i went into the hospital and they glued it back together and I'm still in the process of getting the super glue out of my hair. So <laughs> it's been an interesting few days with that. But it is healing nicely. And yeah, I can actually put my hand on my head now and it doesn't hurt. So lesson learned. Lesson learned with these things. We're definitely going to change the, the edge of them, I think. This is a wall that has now dried. You can see it's crack city. There's lots of cracks in it. But like Dustin says, we've still got to do the other side. So it is acting as a block, a wall. We will be putting a smoother layer over the top to fill in those cracks and obviously at the bottom down here as well. But it's setting, this one's a bit soft. This one, slightly harder. And you can see the cracks and actually you can see here, Dustin was saying about we were using thinner stuff last time, thinner kind of dried grass. It's much, much thinner. If I pull a bit out there, Whereas the straw we hold it, we're doing this time is much thicker. We hope it will have a better binding than this thin stuff. So we'll clay over those cracks once it's dried solid and do the insides afterwards. Amber's just chilling here. Jax is over there being naughty, not settling. So this is the ash we got from the fire. We scooped it up on some cedar bark, brought it over here and we've got quite a bit. We've been using about two double handfuls each on on each mix which is essentially each wall panel That's amazing. Look at that. So this is a, is it a dragonfly? It's got to be, isn't it? Look at that. Or a damselfly. No, that's a dragonfly. So dragonflies have got two wings. Yeah, damsels are a lot smaller. That is awesome. Wow, look at it. Absolute beautiful. Look at the wings. Just sitting around that clay that we were digging, digging in a few, what, half an hour ago? Yeah. Look at those wings just. That is incredible. Like warming up. Yeah. Waiting for takeoff. That is very, very cool. Lovely markings on it, isn't it? Yeah, it's really good, isn't it? And there we go. <laughs> right, back to work. <laughs> you got a new friend there. So some of you might be wondering where we get our clay from. This is uh, an area about 50 meters away, roughly, from the roundhouse itself. And you can see there's a track here. And the owner has been basically clearing these forestry tracks for the vehicles. And they, where they're clearing this track about a foot deep, foot and a half deep, they're probably gonna be putting hardcore down uh, to make it less liable to flood and also for the heavy vehicles to not then create deep ruts in the clay itself. So it's actually really benefited us because you can see along the edge here, the verge, is just full of mountains of clay. So we've got clay absolutely everywhere. We're not short of that resource at all. 
and it's made it really useful that it's only 50 meters or so away from the roundhouse itself. So, you know, it's, it, we're very fortunate in that sense, but that's basically where we're getting the clay from. And I'll just show you what it looks like because we do have to process it down a bit before we put it onto the roundhouse itself. So essentially this is one of the mounds and where on the top is actually a layer of soil that's mixed with the clay that's been dried by the sun because it's on the top. So it's absolutely rock hard and we can't really use it. It's this stuff, it's just crumbly and very, very hard. You can't, I can't even break that up. So we have to dig, we have to basically dig through that layer to get to this, which is a bit more of the clay layer that we're talking about and that we want. There's a bit of white sort of mold there, but that's what we want. It's kind of an orangey yellow color. That's where the clay is at. If I dig my finger and you can see it's soft and it kind of pulls apart. And I can mold that if I squeeze that a couple of times. I can mold it, shape it into like a ball. Some of it's soft, some of it's hard. That's why we have to add water to it as well. But you can see, I mean, this is almost ready for like straight, you could almost use this straight up with a tiny bit of water for pottery. Like there's a, there's a bit of clay there. So it's just interesting to see the different texture of clay that we've got here and the, how much of it is mixed with the soil itself and how we can try and get the best out of it. Because you, you know, you can see the color difference from this sort of clay and the darker clay that's mixed with soil, which isn't so good for the roundhouse, but that I can squeeze nice and flat. So that's what we're looking for. It's a lot of, lot of work, a lot of kind of manual labor stuff to get to dig down to get to it, but that's pretty much what we're going for. So this is our mix. We've added ash, uh, quite a bit more ash to this mix. So it's gonna be interesting to see how this one dries compared to the sections where we haven't used ash. But essentially what we're doing is making it into a small, kind of that sort of size, like a cricket ball almost. And as you go to push it, you can, we, we, you can throw it against here and sometimes it'll <laughs> stick, but that one didn't. But like, you, like, like Dustin's gonna do there. So you can throw it and it will stick which helps, but when you want to be accurate with it, it kind of goes a bit all over the place. So we tend to just get you, use this part of your hand, the palm of your hand, and then you can really push and smooth it at the same time. So you can kind of work the shape a lot better by doing it that way. If you really get it in those cracks as well. Yeah, you just, it, it, you need it to be sitting in the middle of the wattle because that's where that yeah, structural is, structurally it's so going to be strong. It dries and it grips it as yeah. it dries, which is So you're, you're essentially squeezing it into all the gaps in this wattle so the clay is sitting on itself. Kind of like brickwork, really. And then you can use the palm of your hand to just smooth everything off. And I was saying to Dustin, it's really satisfying. It really it? is it's just, satisfying. It's a yeah. really monotonous task. It's really repetitive. Yeah. But you could just do it all day.
So we're on to the last panel. And you can see we've got this section here. It's quite nice to be able to see the exposed wattle work of the hazel and then the, the clay daubing, uh, just to get an idea of how it works and the clay fitting in between the gaps in these sticks and then structurally drying and making a wall, especially when you do it to the other side. We've, this is, I think, wall number 11. Um, I'm not sure, but earlier you saw us cut this to size. Like I say, we made them in six foot. We made these two front ones in six foot by six foot panels. Yes, we could have put the vertical uprights in first and then weaved in and out. But what we found from experience is it's actually easier to do all the weaving on the big uh, base kind of sleeper that we did where we all got the holes. It's easier to do all that weaving first and then just line it up and, and cut. And yes, it does mean you have to cut kind of twice and, and use waste a bit more material, but the material doesn't get totally wasted. We use it for fire lighting as well. But the mix is getting better. Each time we do it, we're learning what to put in what section, basically. And you can see this there. It, we found that we weren't using as much straw in some of the other mixes, especially around the corner of this panel where we started. That one, was really small pieces of dry grass and it just didn't bind properly but now you can see that straw there is so much better. On the inside we're going to try a bit more of a traditional method and use a bit more animal dung which will be fun. That will probably be the, ep the next episode where we clay all the inside and we've got a few other bits to do to the joints of the house before we can put the roofing material on. But you know it's, it's, it's a great experience, it's good hands-on fun you guys can even try this at home in your garden if you if you want to know how to make the wattle fence like we do here. I'll put a link up to that video of exactly how to make it. And maybe you could do it around your garden borders and vegetable p patches and things like that. Uh, you could use them for raised beds and the edging. But it's just a great thing to do with kids especially as well. Just mixing up that clay, that water, a bit of wood ash if you've got some and some straw. This isn't a specific cob mix. Cob would involve the use of sand, sharp sand to, to be specific. I don't know about what was used a thousand six hundred years ago. I don't think many people do know. We're just guessing at it as a society. We can only really guess what they used but I would say they probably didn't really use things like sand or sharp sand. They would have used animal dung a lot more back then. So they would have had the clay especially here in the UK. In the south where I am there's loads of clay every, everywhere. Uh, they would have had the straw, they would have used that, uh, or hay potentially back then. And they would have also uh, yeah, had the animal dung and the wood ash available to them. So we're trying to keep as specific as we can to this, this area and this woodland that we've got. M the majority, I'd say, yeah, pretty much most of the stuff that we've used so far, the natural materials, is from this woodland. So it's quite exciting and it's good fun. Hands on, this is pretty much as bushcraft as you can get, just using natural materials to build with. There's a little worm there, we better save him. Don't want him drying in the wall. Be free. Let's crack on. Well, that's it. Going to round off the episode there. Thank you very much for tuning in. I know it was a lot of repetitive work, but believe me, guys, it was a bit more repetitive for us. That's been a few days having to do that, collect the clay, mix it all up, put it on, and then just do it the same old time on each panel. But it's looking much more authentic, much more like a Celtic roundhouse, probably would have looked over a thousand years ago. We're pretty pleased. There are going to be cracks. There's definitely going to be cracks. We know that because we've seen that on the other side. We've used different materials on different panels as a test to see which one comes out best. Definitely we've found that the ones where there's been wood ash involved have come up slightly better. We're then going to clay over those cracks to fill them in. And each time it cracks, we'll just put another layer over and eventually that will get, you know, a lot smoother and it should crack a lot less. It's because we have really mild, hot temperatures, humid temperatures at the moment. So there's a lot of contraction and expansion going on with the clay where it's absorbing all that moisture and then drying really fast in the sun. We are gonna try and put some tarps on the top of it 
for the next couple of days. Hopefully we don't have enough tarps to cover all of it, but it does from experience with the Saxon House, it does help to let the clay dry slowly. And really that's what we want. We need it to dry slowly and not fast because that's when it cracks. But it's middle of summer and we've had no rain at all really. So it's drying pretty fast. But it is what it is, we're enjoying it. The next episode is gonna be fun because we're gonna be inside, working on the inside, but also we're gonna be using slightly different materials and we may have a guest appearance on the show potentially. So keep an eye out for that. The dogs are having good fun. They finally settled down. They've had a good play. That was Jack's knocking a tripod. But to everyone who's tuned into the series, I do really appreciate it. I'm gonna put a link up here if you're new to the channel to the beginning of the Celtic Roundhouse series where you can watch from episode one all the way through to, I think this is episode six at the moment. I never get it right, but yeah, it's all there, all the links, so I appreciate that. Uh, do check out Dustin's channel. He's done a video on this as well. You can see his episode, which will include different parts. And also check out our other YouTube channel, TA Fishing, uh, which features my dad doing lots of fun outdoor fishing related things. I'll put links to everything you need to know in the description. Cheers for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next episode.